Well, for the first time ever, it'll be an audio review of this one. Uh, care to introduce yourself, second person? Um, should I just do my username? Yeah. Yeah, either or. Yeah, I'm Keybug55, mainly on anything, mostly on Twitter. But, um, my first name is Marissa, if you want to know that. That's basically my introduction. Yeah, fair enough. Better than mine. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team. Yep. The two spin-offs laid into the Game Boy Advance's game. I actually want to say this was the last Game Boy Advance game? Because um, it was also on the DS? It was very late into the Game Boy Advance's cycle. I think the last ones... Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was like Yoshi Touch and Go? I'm not sure about that, though. Yeah, I, mean, I definitely know it's the last of the Pokemon games, because Emerald came out the year before. Right. It was very late into the Game Boy Advance's lifetime, then it just all shifted over a DS. Yeah, especially because I think 06 was when the DS Lite came out, didn't it? I'm not too sure about that. Um, I have a DS Lite on me right now, actually. I do as well, the Mario Web the Mario Red one, because I went through a DS Lite already. Right, I, I just have a... I just have a DS Lite with stickers on it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I, I never actually liked the stickers for the DS's, so... No, no, they weren't... Any, they, these aren't, like, DS, DS Lite specific stickers. They were just stickers I got. I just got a music sticker, and I got, like, two water Pokemon stickers that I got from a Manaphy event in Toys R Us for, di for Diamond Pearl. Oh, that Manaphy. Yes, that Manaphy. May it rest in peace. I know, I miss him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where my fourth gen games are. I'm sorry. Uh, the annoying thing is I lost my Manaphy recently. Oh. Oh. oh, right. Didn't you, like, clone it wrong? I uh, tried to clone it. Right. Someone else got it. Uh, I just had that uh, still got it. Alright. Someday. But, yeah, anything you want to open with concerning the actual two games we're reviewing? Um... Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we could start with the opening to the game. Like, the yeah. Q&A test. Yeah, I've got to say, well, it was a good idea, I'm just not a particular fan of how random it is. Yeah, the randomization is a problem. Like, if you're like me and you start out with a Q-bone and then it had to reset it right as you reach Sky Tower. Well, then it was me, a friend reset for me. Side of then. But, and especially if you're a grass type, and I hate grass types, and you have to keep restarting until you get the Pokemon you want. It's kind of annoying. But I, I still kind of like it, in a way. Like it's it, good for a first playthrough, I want to say, but when you're trying to get specific Pokemon, it just becomes an absolute nightmare to do. And for a speed run, speed run especially. Yeah. So, actually, on the matter, what was your first Pokemon? I'm assuming it was Cubone? Based um, on what you just said? It was Cubone, and then a friend reset, then, uh, reset it for me, and then I was a Psyduck. So I finished the game as a Psyduck, but started the game as a Cubone. Like, first run. For me, it was a march up of Torchic as the partner. Right. No, oh, Rayquaza it was a pain in the ass. Rayquaza shouldn't be a pain, or really anything shouldn't be a pain if you pick Toda, I think. But Toda looks so creepy. I hate its sprite. Yeah, I've, I've actually got a Toda plush over there. It's a lot better than that sprite was. I wish I. I don't, I don't have any Johto starter sprites. You're lucky. I mean, that sprite's plushes. A friend of mine got it from the Pokemon Center. Oh, uh, that's sweet. I got a Pokemon Center Mew. I love Mew. Mew is like one of my favorite legends. <laughs> yeah, I've got a Mew as well. It's just, it's just one of the normal ones, not the Pokemon Center. It's still Mew. Yeah. <laughs> I actually got it because when I first transferred my Pokemon to X and Y, Mew was the only one I couldn't transfer up. Right. So I got it thinking, this is probably the only 3D Mew I'm going to have for a while. <laughs> I, I think I have a Mew in X and Y right now. I think I traded up from... I don't even know. Oh, I think I traded up from, like, the 4th gen game. I still have Soul Silver, but not the other two. Yeah, probably when Mew gets featured in another movie, we'll get another one. 
Uh, right now it's like Hoopa, right? I think it's gonna be the next one. Yeah, Hoopa then Volcanion. Right. I have no idea what Volcanion's supposed to be. A uh, fire water type of Zeta had anything to say about it. Steam monster, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Though I have no idea why it was in a fusion reaction plant. Uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll learn. We'll learn his origins. I don't think his origins had anything to do with the fan game, but eh, whatever. That's true. Uh, one thing I do want to touch up on is the trailer, because I'm assuming that's how we first got introduced to it in, like, the TV advert. Um, uh, introduced to what? Well, the Rambler rescue team. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, I, I remember that TV advertisement, like, in the back of my hand. I, I love that. I love that. Come on! We've got rescuing to do! <laughs> yeah. I think I started out with a Charmander when I was Cubone, and then when I was a Psyduck, I, I got a Cyndaquil. Torchic for the win. <laughs> if I'm not playing as Torchic, Torchic's my partner. Unless if you're in the second game, that's a story for another day. Yeah, we'll get to the Explorers when we get to it. Yeah. Yeah, still better than Gates. That's true. I never played Gates. I've seen gameplay of Gates. I had a friend who played Gates. He said it was awful. Um, the gameplay just kind of looks childish. Ironically enough, Gates is the only poster I've got hung up at the moment. I got it for free from my local EB. Alright. Oh, right, Australia, EB Games. You still have this? Yes. Yeah. Now, over here, it's GameStop, which they just kind of merged with somebody on GameStop, and it's been there since 06, I want to say. Oh, goody, it's been alive as long as Sonic 06. <laughs> oh, Sonic 06? What would you say it's worse, 06 or Boom? Boom is still moderately playable. I I'm pretty sure nothing Boom has can beat the billiard ball puzzle. <laughs> okay, so Boom is more playable, but I would say Boom hurt the Sonic franchise more than 06 does. Yeah, mainly because 06 was going off Shadow, which no one really liked anyway, so it wasn't as much of a hit. 06 was kind of a wake-up call, and then they tried, they started to tread upwards, but then when Boom hit, mobile games, you know you're not going to come back from that. I'm sorry, Sega. R.I.P. Apparently, Sega's going to be bringing Sonic back for another console game eventually for the 25th anniversary, but what? it's a movie tie-in. A movie? What movie? A movie. Apparently, Sony's making a Sonic movie. Oh my god, it, I just hope it's not another Sonic fan film. Please tell me you haven't watched that. Oh, god, that movie. <laughs> oh no, you did. I'm so sorry I had to live through that. Ugh. I'll get to it eventually. Let's pray that's another Sonic OST! What was that OST? I actually like the OVA. OVA, it's OVA, right. Yeah. Yeah, I really love the OVA. I just pray that's. Like, it is another OVA, not another Sonic fan film. You may know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to stop you because I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? We're not doing a Sonic. We're doing Mystery Dungeon. Yeah. We should get back on yeah. track here. <laughs> oh god, this, I'm, getting, I'm guessing this is going to become a recurring thing. <laughs> between us or between any, anybody? Uh, us specifically at the moment. Uh, anyway, Mystery Dungeon. That's get back on track here. I guess the next place to go is the opening, so Tiny Woods, Thunderwave yeah. Cave, Mount Steel. Tiny, Tiny Woods, I, here's the thing, Tiny Woods was fair, it was full of bug types, normal types, flying types may be a bit unfair if you're starting as grass types, but they don't, I don't think they have any flying moves by then, no, they had guns. Yeah, I think the only flying in there is Pidgey, so... Mm -hmm. But the thing with Thunder Wave Cave is like, oh hey, you start out with a water type? Too bad. Yeah. It, it wasn't that bad. I think the only major problem with that was Elekid, who had an electric type move. And Let's Quick Attack. Even... Don't forget about Quick Attack. Uh, quick Attack's a fair point. Mm. Um, my, honestly, biggest problem, though, has always been Mount Steel, the bloody Skarmory fight. Except I've never had any trouble with Skarmory. Skarmory I used to have a lot of problems with, not now. My biggest problem with Mount Steel this time was Beldum, of all things. Oh yeah, the takedown, but... 
don't you have the fire type on you at all? I did, I don't think it had any fire type moves, and if it did, one of the things I'd do, because the problem with the originals compared to Explorers is your PP doesn't regenerate for boss fights. Oh, I, I learned that, that lesson the hard way. I never knew that happened in the second one. It did. Well then, maybe I, maybe I just restocked on um, those PP, what were they called? Um, PP, PP Maxes. Yeah, I guess I drank PP Maxes for nothing in those games. Yeah, I'm thankful for that change, but you know, get to it eventually. <laughs> yes. Store for another day. I remember. Uh, I remember when I used to play these games. Groudon used to be the boss I dreaded, even more than Rayquaza. Groudon, I don't think was as bad. I think it was his dungeon, Magma Cavern. I think it is. Yes, it's his dungeon as well as the section before Groudon. It's just a lot of. Powerful fire types. Even if you were a, even if you were a water type, I think it's still pretty tricky because uh, I don't know. There's a lot. Of, there's just a lot of things. A lot of high level Pokemon. And by that time, yeah. I think you were. Were you running? By the time when you reached Magma Cavern. No, Magma Cavern is right before Sky Tower, so you weren't running. Oh, yeah, you were yeah. trying to stop the meteor. All right. Oh yeah. Spoilers. There's a giant meteor. <laughs> Spoilers! Giant Meteor, and this is not Oras. Spoilers for Oras. There's Giant Meteor. I thought not the theory with the Meteor from Oras going into the Mystery Dungeon games, I thought that was a nice little attention to detail if it's true, but... It should be. I think the two common ones, it was either gonna go to Ruby Sapphire Emerald or Raven Blue Rescue Team. Well, the thing is, Either. were there any meteors in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald? I guess you would count the bits of that the de Deoxys piece, you know, in um in the Birth Island. Maybe that's where the Deoxys is. Why the Deoxys is there in Birth Island? But or it could have what? Uh, or it would have gone to the moon of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. In which case, it would have led to all the mis all the rumors of. Go I've had 100 launches at the Moss Team Space Center, and you can travel to the moon to get either Jirachi or the Oxus, depending on who's telling the story. This is 1,000% true. I've been there. <laughs> I don't think I ever got up past 50 launches. <laughs> I, I think I start up Emerald after, like, so many years and the battery failed, and says, We've reached 260 launches. Wow. Okay then. I think I think the launch is like it's like weeks. A week. It, each time a week passes, like it says, Oh, we've reached another launch or whatever. It's really, I think that's how it is. It's really just an attention to detail saying, Hey look, we have a clock on this game. Yeah, clock that's apart from that mostly useless unless you want to have savings at Lily Cove or the mythical Mirage Island, which I could never I get. I never got to that. It's like, oh I don't see a Mirage Island today, but I come just... back tomorrow! <laughs> never! Come back never! <sighs> I never got that Lumberry and that beautiful paradise of why nots. <laughs> yeah, you can get the egg of a why not, so who really needs the thing? That's true. Or, you know, Wobbuffet. Can you get Wobbuffet in that Yeah, you can. I think it's the. Yeah, of course. Safari? I th yeah, Safari. Mm -hmm. only, in, only in Emerald, I think. Uh, just a bunch of Joda stuff. Which he never yeah. had an Oros, and it's, it annoys me. I guess it's alleviated by all the Mirage spots where a lot of Jodos are, so... Yeah. I mean, I'm happy Mirage spots are there, but Mirage Island from Emerald, Ruby Sapphire, never got to it. But again, yeah. let's not trail off Mystery Dungeon now. <laughs> it's so easy to... It's like there's so so many branching pathways and conversations you could have, but we could only do one right now. Of course. <laughs> uh, one thing I noticed though with the sprite, it was it wasn't so bad for Red Rescue Team, which is the version I played. It was more so for your version. You could tell that Blue Rescue Team was hindered by the Game Boy Advance. Right. I I think I know what you mean. Although I think. I th I think the music has changed for Blue Rescue, like it's more high quality than Game Boy Advance. 
At least that's what if, it seems like. If it is, it's very subtle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I noticed there was like, um... Like, I noticed with, uh, I think it was, um... Mount Steel, I heard the soundtrack too. Like, it's kind of more different in Game Boy. There's more, more of a bass in the Game Boy version than, than the, uh, 3... The regular DS version. Well, you okay. can't play it on the 3DS. I mean, you can, but that's not what the ver- that's not what the game was designed to be on. Yeah, true. Yeah, who knows? We might get it on the Wii U now. I don't know how that's going. I mean, I see how it works, but it's just you get a whole entire top screen as as like the TV and your bottom screen, just this little thing. And like, it's configurable. I know, but but most games, it's like it's like the top screen, especially for like Wild World, is like sky. So all you see on your TV is just sky. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not too sure how it's gonna work. Like, yeah. I think the only games that's gonna work is well, actually I think the worst one's gonna be the Explorers games again, because your top screen is either your map, your stats, both your controls. I think basically it, nothing. I actually think it would work better on the Wii U if you configure it so your top screen is your bottom screen. So, so the TV you have all the action, and on your bottom screen you would see the map. It, it mm. wouldn't be something stupid like the map is on the TV and the action is on your like, gamepad. Mm, true. It's like oh, somebody comes in saying oh, what you're playing? All you see on the TV is a map. Yeah, like. Right. That'll just be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And not as awkward as trying to play the Metroid Prime trilogy on just the gamepad. I... Now that's awkward. <laughs> that, that would seem awkward. Like, the Wii U, there's like... I, I don't know how you screw up a gi- what is essentially a giant DS, but um... Like some some games for some reason they they just don't know what to, like what to do with it. Like maybe a little nitpick from me, but I know since Smash Brothers on um, the 3DS version when you want to quick, it's it's not like LRA starter or whatever they do to qu- to um, do a no contest for a match. You just have quit on screen. That's fine. That's good. I like that change. But how come they don't have it on the Wii U version? Is what I don't understand. Yeah, where it's L R start A. No, I think that might come in the next patch. I'm hoping it comes in the next patch. Unless if it's something they eternally li- looked over and they just and they just never nobody ever pointed out except me. <laughs> Who knows? It could be because of the melee fans. Oh yeah, you gotta have that LRA start in which the gamepad is so big that you have to push start with your nose. <laughs> oh god. All right. Let's get, let's get back on track again. Yeah, once again. <laughs> again, this is going to become a recurring trend for this review. Just just enjoy your conversation. Trust, trust us, it'll be fun. Yeah. Fun day, fun time. I'm definitely naming this video, though, you know, Random Tangents and maybe a, a <laughs> Mystery Dungeon review. <laughs> Mystery Dungeon with Random Tangents. Mostly Random Tangents. Yeah, at least it's better than what I've got as the title for my Transformers Prime review. What was that? Which should be up by now anyway, so it's... This is your <laughs> job, bae. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. Yeah, I just thought it would be a nice counter to what I named the Age of Extinction review. <laughs> slash thesis. You're, you're, naming, naming titles are fun. Yeah. But, ga- uh, but getting back on Tribe of Mystery Dungeons, something I want to point out is that even though it's been so long and with all this Wi-Fi and DS Wi-Fi shutting down, Wii Wi-Fi shutting down, the game still fully works. You can fully do everything that the game was designed to do because it's mainly local play. And even on internet play, even though it doesn't actually have internet play, you can still do that. Yeah, I actually really like the fact. One of the things that the Game Boy Advance couldn't do was internet play, so that's a time when the GBA hindered to make it better. It's like some sort of weird paradox, or... or I, I forget the word. I'm to see. A con- contra- contradiction 
into making some, like hindering to make some better. It's really cool. It's, it's a amazing. contradiction in the evidence, Your Honor. Yes. Phoenix Wright, I'm good at this. Of course. Yes. I gotta finish that game. Yeah, that's fun little games. Yeah. I encountered some weird Phoenix Wright. It's like, it's like I got the evidence. I look. I got the evidence and wouldn't accept the evidence. I looked up the guide and it said that was right. I don't, know, I don't know what I was doing wrong. I thought the game glitched and I just stopped playing. It's very specific. That's one of the things I didn't bring up when I did the Ace Attorney reviews is that a lot of the time it's very specific on when you have to do it. I know, it's I thought Especially worse in right. Apollo Justice. <laughs> I thought I did it right. I think... I, I looked it up. I think it was like, um... Spoilers for... Phoenix Wright, it was like the one before the final one, I was like defending Edgeworth, because he thought he, um, people thought he killed somebody with a gun. Remember when he was on a boat? Yeah, when you are going up against Von Karma! Yes, that was it. That, that's where Greatest prosecutor. What? Greatest prosecutor, Von Karma. Uh, I gotta finish that game. By finish, meaning restart, because that file was on an old computer a long time ago on an old save. Well, if you're gonna restart, get either the 3DS port of the iOS version. Or, or you know, virtual con not virtual console, but ROM. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's how I played it on ROM. <sighs> so, we got a mystery dungeon. What, uh, what else is there to cover? Um, I guess the other big thing is the difference between the main story and the post-game. And the post-game, it will kick you through unless you know exactly what you're doing. I'm looking at you, Wish Cave. I never did the 99 floor dungeons. I don't think I ever did it. <laughs> at least finished in that. Wait, no, I had a new. I think I did 99 floor dungeons because I had a new once. Um, yeah, because you can get Mew in Wish Cave, but it's a... Only spawns once when you have the three pieces from the Reggies right. as an item. It, so if you fail the dungeon, there's a strong chance you'll lose the music box and... I'm, I can't remember if I got the music box for Reggies or I used this um, Wonder Mail generator and I kept the music box. I might have done the latter. Hacks. I call hacks. <laughs> oh. I, I got a Wonder Man generator on, on my PC right now and I like, downloaded from this site and um, it's it's just amazing. The, the 99 floor dungeons I can live with if it wasn't the extra rules. You have to bring in, in the specific HM, you've got, you'll get reset to level 1, you can't bring in any items and it's just... And don't they have like traps really early on? Early on. Yeah, the post game is when they introduce the traps. No, I mean Solar Cave. Well, yeah, but I mean like nine nine floor dungeons, even floor run is like, oh hey, level one, you get traps. Yeah. And how many nine nine floor dungeons were there? Uh, I've got the guidebook. I'll go get it in a sec. Give me a minute. Oh wait. Yeah, I actually own the Mystery Dungeon Prima Strategy Guide. I've heard I've heard things about Prima Guides and them not being so reliable. It's okay if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> That's true. I heard, uh, what was it? I think Animal Crossing. Either Animal Crossing or core game Pokemon series weren't that reliable. Like, they, they would lie about, like, prices on Animal Crossing or, or like, Pokemon locations. I think that could just be localization, because the guides would have to be made before the release, and there's a chance that it could have gone changed. That's true. Even, I don't know, I'm not... Even when I'm looking at some wikis for certain games, even the wikis are incredibly unreliable. Yeah. You, Monster Hunter 4 wiki, you are terrible. Get your shit together. How's the net infinite grind going? I'm I'm going great. I actually, I actually got a pretty far away in that game. <laughs> is that all you see that ga game is? It's just an infinite grind? I've got to say, I loved your 
Mm -hmm. A photo of the amiibo and the monster plush. Yeah. That was adorable. Yeah. I'm giving to a friend who's gonna give me a monster plush. Most likely Rathian, but I can tell you. One thing I just want to bring out, man, because I'm going through the guide at the moment. And you can tell that Mystery Dungeon was made in Gen 3 because water dungeons, water dungeons everywhere! <laughs> too much water, so I think that game is more deserving of, of a too much water than, like, Aura. Aura as was, yeah. Because, yeah. my god, the water dungeons. Oh, yeah, if you, if you are, or if you have a fire partner, in which I had a fire partner in that game, no luck, goodbye. I just love the fact that the primer guide has for a lot of the images. I have a torture called Cubone, and there's Waterfall Pond, the Grand Sea, Far Off Sea, uh, uh, Wish Cave, of course. I hope it has Jirachi in the Wish Cave on it. Yeah, on the 99th floor. Where you can either recruit it, or it will give you something for free. Wait, or there's a chance that Jirachi won't show up? No, it's the boss. Oh. If you beat Jirachi, you can either recruit Jirachi, or have it grant you a wish. Being lots of money, lots of items, a friend area, more strength, or something good, in which case it'll be a random Pokemon. Oh yes, would I have Jirachi, or would I have a potential Magikarp? Hmm... I, just, yes. I, I have to weigh my chances here. And I think it's a one and done sort of thing. I've never actually been able to get through Wish Cave because it's a 99 and start it with a one dungeon. Is Wish Cave like the worst 99 floor dungeon? I want to say it is. <laughs> Not including the Zero Isle from Explorers. No. Yes. Yeah, Stormy yes, Sea no. is another one. Oh wait, another one of the 99 floors, Joyous Tower. Which, you pretty much have no reason to go through the 99 floors. Wait, what happens if you do? You just get some, something shiny? Probably. Well, according to this, the, this, the Pokemon you can find on the 99th floor are Salamence, Claydol, Aerodactyl, Metagross, and Wheezy. Everything that you find in Sky Tower, basically. Yep. And what's the point? I don't know. Purity Forest is a 99 floor, but at least that one gets you to rock the Celebi. Celebi. Oh, Buried Relic is where you can get me. My bad. Uh, but you won't have to go through the whole dungeon, like you said. <laughs> No, it's me will appear on level 36 to 98, but to do it you have to be Reggie Steel, Reggie Ice, and Reggie Rock to get their music parts. Right. Hmm. Silver Trench, and nine, another 99 floors to get Lugia, but to get that you have to recruit the three legendary birds. Which I did, I did that. Yeah, they, they were fun to do. Never got Lugia though. Uh, if I remember correctly, all the legendaries I did get, I got Latios, Latios, Mew, Lugia, three legendary birds, I got Mewtwo, I think I got Deoxys, not sure if I, I think I got Deoxys, um, I got, what are the legendaries, uh, is that all the legendaries? Uh, Zapdos, Moltres, Arcuna, oh. Mewtwo, Mew, I got, I got Rayquaza too. Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Ho-Oh, the... Lugia, right. I got the dogs, Celebi, I got the, Ho -Oh. the Weather Trio. Right, I got the Reggie. I don't think I got the Reggies, actually. I'm supposed to recruit them and they just keep blowing up on my face. Uh, I hate it when they do that. <laughs> Again, going off on a tangent, but still Pokemon related. How, how much do you hate it when you go on a Nuzlocke? And it, the game gives you a one of the Reggies as a starter. Oh, randomizer Nuzlocke. That's why I don't play randomizer Nuzlocks. <laughs> no, I have not completed a Nuzlocke for that reason. Even I actually, you have a I choice not to do a randomizer Nuzlocks. Yeah, true, but Nuzlocke's still a Nuzlocke. That's true. Randomizer I have done once, and that was fun. Wh which game? 
Uh, it was an Emily randomizer. Ah, uh, the easiest randomizer to do. Yeah. I've got to say, a fun one I saw was for black and white, I think it was. This person mm -hmm. had just caught Latias as the... for the Nuzlocke rule. Right. Well, then, the, have a guess of what the next Pokemon was. Um, is it like another Latias? Nope. Um, is it legendary? Yep. Um, do you get some strong like Mewtwo? Nope. Maybe? Arceus. What? It was Arceus. Oh, Arceus. <laughs> and I think his comment was, only this game, only this Nuzlocke, from only on my channel, could make a Latias a disappointing catch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh my that was freaking God. hilarious, and it was the cap. It was the Pokemon right after as well. <laughs> now I was watching a Nuzlocke run, and he was like, and he he's doing and like he can ah can't speak. He's doing a thing where any Pokemon is viable, like legendaries are viable as long as they're, they're the first encounter. First encounter that you see is was an Arceus, but too bad Arceus was too strong for him, overpowered him, kill. Pretty much killed most of this team. Uh, I'm sorry for that one. <laughs> I, I think uh, he encountered Arceus first time, two times, and he failed to catch him both times. Oh, that's <laughs> painful. Yes. I gotta watch more of that let's play. Oh <laughs> One thing concerning the hardest 99 floor dungeon Western Cave. Here's the bio from the Primer Guide. After recruiting Ho Ho, a cutscene will commence starring Charizard and Blastoise. They're exploring a really tough dungeon, but even these bruises will learn and there's always someone stronger. The Western Cave will become available for exploration. If you're brave enough to try it, be prepared though, as it is the, will be the biggest challenge yet. Multiple types of Pokemon, no unclaimed food items, and I and 99 floors to climb, you also need to know Surf, or at least have it in your inventory, and a key will be necessary to open up the locked door on the 59th floor, behind which you'll find a beauty scout. One saving point is, point of this dungeon is the abundance of Reviver Seeds, which the wild Pokemon will pick up and will use at that point. Oh my god. That's the one thing I hate about uh, the Mystery Dungeon games. Wait, oh, there's not even When a the wild Pokemon use the Reviver Seeds. Wait, there's not even a Pokemon, like a legendary you could recruit after that? You just Mewtwo. Get... Oh, Mewtwo. I guess I did, because I did, I did ha do remember clearly having Mewtwo in my older game before I lost it. At least by the sound of it, it's not one of those recent level 1 dungeons, but I could be horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, go check your shiny little Prima Guide there. Could be wrong too. Yeah. Um, I did have a level 100 Articuno, which helped me a lot. Why I had a level 100 Articuno is because I was obsessed with that game. Of course. <laughs> uh, it's not a reset to level 1, but to get Mewtwo, you've got to go through the dungeon twice because, because after you beat Mewtwo for the first time, Cryptic Cave will become available as a purchasable friend area, and then you go and recruit him. Fun! Yeah, I must uh, have did that, with Articuno at least. On the subject of friend areas, what do you think of them as the mechanic for catching, basically? I like- I love going to the friend areas just to see- see the little Pokemon community grow. And, uh, do- I love the music of the friend areas, I love the style of the friend areas. Not the most, um, efficient way to get Pokemon, but but it's still, it's still a nice touch. It feels more livelier than, um, than the sec how the second game does it. Yeah. Well, I've got no problem with the friend areas as a concept. My big problem with them is how rare it is to recruit Pokemon at some points. I think the legendaries are... Once you do the rematch, you can recruit them, no problems, some exceptions included. But for 
like the wild Pokemon, for example, it, you have to beat 20 Pidgeys in order to find a Pidgey who will go, Oh, hi, I want to come on your team. Please let me. Me the Scyther, basically. Every time every time I restart the game, I'm like, I gotta get a Scyther. Gotta run around this whole dungeon just to get a Scyther. Twice. Yep. And mainly there is an item that makes it better, but I don't think you get that to the post game. I actually think that's in Mount Far Away. Or, oh, oh, dungeon. or you know, use the Wonder Mail generator. Like I do. Yes, but then that's cheating. <laughs> What's cheating? It's not cheating if it's in the game. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's not like I'm using an action replay. No, of course not. <laughs> Then again, this is coming from the person who was able to get an Alakazam before taking on Gardenia. Good for you. Multiple DS consoles with a win. <laughs> I oh, and my shiny Monferno is looking really nice and pearl at the moment. I, I have an action replay for my, um, my older DS games. The best experience I had with that action replay was Animal Crossing. I I think I use Action Replay both in um, the DS World War version and the GameCube version because Action Replay plus Animal Crossing equals fun under the sun. Infinite money! <laughs> oh, bells, whatever they're called. Infinite money, cha changing villagers to your liking, and running super fast. Everyone's KK Slider! <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, I've seen I've seen people mod uh, the city city folk Animal Crossing, and then they made everyone like like I've seen somebody made everyone like Katie or everyone like um, Katie Slider or Tordmer replace Pascal with everyone. It's so amazing. No, the sick cruel one is if it's all Rossetti. Uh, no, not Rossetti. The Tanuki. Oh, all Tom Nook. All oh, Tom Nook. <laughs> Tom Nook. If everyone was Tom Nook, it's like, you can't escape your debt no matter where you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, let, let me... Oh, let, let me sell my fish in the museum. Where's Blathers? What are you doing selling those fish? You gotta get your debt? You gotta, you gotta pay me your debt? Sell me, sell, sell me those fish. I've got to say, I like the US name for Animal Crossing Wii a lot better than the one that's here, because right here, well, in Australia, right. it's called Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City! That That's that in... It's um, that name in Australia and the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah because they're both pal. Right. You want city folk. Like, you, you don't really actually live in the city, you just kind of go to the city. So I think Let's Go to the City is more of a... Accurate title than City Folk. Accurate, but it's not as catchy. Exactly. But then again, you also get there's another game where the US name is a lot better than the PAL version. Kirby's Adventure Wii, aka Return to Dreamland. Kirby's Adventure Wii. That's again an accurate name. Accurate name, but Return to Dreamland is just so much better. Exactly. Oh, what, what's an, what's another name? I, I was just thinking about it, but then I lost it. Um, ah, what was it? I can't remember now. Oh come on. Oh, it could use it could be a subtle one. Sonic Colors in the U.S. or Sonic or the right way to spell colors everywhere else. Oh yeah, the, the right way. The, I'm sorry if America. I'm sorry if America is so backwards. Yeah, I just like making that joke so. <laughs> I actually had this troll trying, well, looking through my content one time, he was going, You don't know how to spell colors, you, you don't know how to spell, no, that's just, that's how you spell it here. That's how I was taught to spell it for my entire education. I've been lied to. Well, considering my grandmother is an English teacher. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, a lot of American, a lot of Americans don't realize that there's life outside of the U.S. <laughs> oh, trust me, I know about that one. <laughs> oh, America. I don't think he ever actually got spelled Australia right. He always kept spelling it as Austria. <laughs> and apparently <laughs> thought I was dead because everyone had a dingo for a pet. <laughs> so, 
yeah, great trolling, dude. Well, well, at least with the Aust like how America's simple, simple Americans see Australia, we just kind of see them as some sort of weird place where there's magical animals called kangaroos that hop around. That's pretty much the only animal you see. That and koalas. We really don't know much about Australia. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I. I don't know a lot about not America either, though. that's because I haven't really need to. I know enough, so I'm not completely hopeless, but... <laughs> what, what's the animal only in America? I guess, at least where I am, deer. Only deer. There's no animal except deer. I, I have two deers as pets. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, an alarm clock of a kookaburra. Oh yes, they're birds, and for some reason, in in like a billion of games, as stock stock uh, stock sounds, um, it's like that cuckoo bear call. But everyone's like, "Hey, it's a monkey!" When it's not. No. That and that's where Though that line up nursery rhyme came from. I will admit it's quite annoying to be in a really bad mood, hear a kookaburra has laugh, and then get maybe don't laugh at me. <laughs> Just strangle them. Uh, too far away. Oh. No, I get night. I get nightingales. Nightingales are annoying. It's like trying to go to sleep, and all you hear is like nightingales like tweeting. It's like two a.m. I thought birds were supposed to be quiet. Yeah, at least it's better than the horde of seagulls that I get in the CBD. Oh, I get seagulls too. They're everywhere. <laughs> exactly. But seagulls and cougar bears and stuff like that are not mystery dungeon. <laughs> yeah, who knows? We might get. Well, actually, you can technically say seagulls are huh? wingo. Oh yeah, I love wingo. And who knows? We might get a cougar bear Pokemon someday. Oh yeah, I'm surprised they haven't had a cougar bear Pokemon. I would love that. Well, they've got a kangaroo in the form of Kangaskhan. Kind of. Kangaroo. If you I mean, Kangaskhan doesn't run really fast, but it has a pouch. If you squint your eyes and lean to the left, it kind of looks like one. <laughs> um, sure, let's go with that. Oh, I'm gonna have some fun editing this. <laughs> Wait, what about koala, koala Pokemon? Uh, now that would be interesting. We need more Australian Pokemon. Yeah. Anything better than Embol. Embol? That, that's, Embol is actually the Pokemon I hate the most in terms of design. Really? Kind of no, like that could just be because I... Embor kind of it, reminds me of some sort of Chinese Zodiac thing. I look at it more as a pro wrestler sort of thing, and aside from the fact I've got no interest in wrestling to begin with, it's... I'm basically comparing it to Blaziken and Infinite. Right. How it's part fighting? Yeah. Even if it has, like, a wrestler, wrestler look to them, um, he, he has a lot of Chinese influence on him if you look in a... He's like, he's like, I don't know how to explain, it, but it has very Chinese um, yeah. design on it. Yeah. Who knows, we might get a Mega Emboar that could change my mind completely. <laughs> That's true. Get on that. Get on that, Game Freak. Oh, we're going to be getting, I um, guarantee you, at some point we're going to have Mega Evolutions for all the starters. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Hey, we're going I back to I hear you crying over there, Johto fanboys. We're going back to Sinnoh. Let's get all the Sinnoh starters. Mega Infernape, Mega Empoleon, which hopefully will be infinitely better than standard Empoleon. Ironically enough, Empoleon's the only reason why I can't get my diamond copy back. My sister's got it, and she loves that Empoleon. Then to the point where I can't it? even have it back. Then just trade the Empoleon? She won't actually pay for any of her own Pokemon games. Give, give her Pearl and trade that Empoleon? Yeah. Not gonna happen. Probably not. Nah. Yeah, I'll get her another yeah, someday. Mm -hmm. I'll get it back. Have you ever had that Pokemon where, where it's like just the Pokemon you ever had since childhood? Because I have that Pokemon. It was a Solomon's. Yeah, my Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza all came from my original save file of Emerald. Exactly. Still but, alive. But are they Pokemon that you hold um, very dear to your heart? Yeah. Alright, good. Unfortunately, I couldn't 
get the Pokemon that re is really close to my heart over, sadly. I'm guessing they're from, um, like, first gen, second gen? No, my original Blaziken, because I didn't uh, play the original gens. I came in in an Emerald. Right. Me too. Exact, exact same timing. Although I will admit that Blaziken's moveset was awful. Yeah, Hyper Beam, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, and Ember. Well, it... <laughs> Ember. <laughs> well, it would have been... It's pretty good considering special, I guess, was huge. Yeah. And attack for Hyper Beam. Would it also be a bad time to mention that it was level 93 by the time I went on to take on the walls for the first time? You what? It was level 93. Oh. I got, well, at least I got my Salmons up to level 100 and Emerald, and then I proceeded to treat it to every single game from that on, and then just ended up back in Hoenn again. <laughs> it's so good when that happens. I know, it's amazing. Welcome home, old friend. <laughs> Welcome home, old friend. We don't have, we, well, we don't have the belt battle frontier, but welcome home. Yeah, have a Megastone. <laughs> exactly. Oh, when I heard Salmon's got the Megastone, I just got... I just got so excited. Oh, you should have seen me when Blaziken's Megaform was announced. Oh, yeah, but you've got Blaziken way before Oras was even considered. Yeah, true, it was in the original one, Veils, and it was just... It's just Lucario, ah, Blaziken. Absol, Blaziken, yes! <laughs> oh, God. And, and Metagross, I thought Mega, Metagross would never get a Mega Evolution, even though he was so deserving to. Now he does. Yeah. We're happy. And he's shiny. Yes. <laughs> and it's glorious. And we can even get two Mega Stones of it in Ores. Right. You know where to look for the second one. <laughs> I kind of wish you were kind of more um, X and Y Mega Stones, but right now we only have Charizard and Mewtwo. You can get all the Mega Stones in Horus. I know, I just kind of wish that they had, um, like, probably not every Pokemon, but more Pokemon had different Mega Stones, like, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. X, X and Y Mega Stones. No, that's what you meant, okay. Yeah. Uh, I wish... I mean, why does this have to be Charizard? Why can't all the stars have an X and Y Mega Stone? I mean... Mm. What? My guess is because Charizard's Charizard. There's a reason why the why the main, well, the only Pokemon from Pokemon Trainers, Pokemon that came into Smash 4, was Charizard. <laughs> and, and I think Mewtwo's might have been because a lot of people didn't like Mega Mewtwo Y when they first saw it, even though it's so much better. I get that Charizard's cool, I get that Charizard is amazing, I'm sorry to all the Charizard fans, but I think... Especially now, Charizard is really, really overrated. Especially since in the first game, he was the worst starter to pick. Oh yeah, I completely agree. And even now, that four times weakness to rock. Except he has that Charizard, you Charizard you X. Stealth rock ain't helping. Wait, he has that Charizard X though. Yeah, but when you first send it out, Stealth rock. True. Unless you've got, like, debug or rapid spin on you, that Charizard's not going to see the light of battle. Nope. <laughs> Which is why I like Blaziken oh so much more. Well, you you live with your fancy fire types, I'm just going to be riding on a Swampert. Yeah, Mega that's Swampert. That's why I have Torterra. What? That's why I have Torterra. <laughs> that, oh, look true. at your four times weakness to grass. Wait. Avalanche? Four, you know, four times weakness to ice? Yeah, remember that Blaziken? <laughs> Is this some sort of verbal Pokemon battle we're having? <laughs> yeah, pretty much at this point. <laughs> um, Blaziken? Well, I have a Salamence. It just, it's just kind of there being powerful. Hyper Beam Mega Gardevoir! <laughs> oh no! No, not that Mega God War. <laughs> one shot Hyper Beam. All I need is that one good shot. Oh my god. Uh, protect, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> that won't help, because when Hyper Beam hits, if it doesn't land, it doesn't recharge. Oh, that's true. 
But you could only hit one Pokemon. Yeah, but that's why you only need that one good shot. That's true. Because it's that reaction when your opponent sees the Hyper Beam for the first time, it's like, oh, crap. Oh, hey, you get a Hyper Boy Beam? 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 Yeah, I, I hear a lot of people saying it's a horrible move to put on guard for. I don't care. It's that one good shot. That's all you need. Why do you put Outrage on a dragon? Why don't yeah. you put Outrage on a dragon? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, Aerial... What was it? Aerialate Thrash, people said? That people... That was so oh, powerful. Dear God. Return Aerialate. That was it. Oh, for the love of Arceus. <laughs> I gotta get on that Solomon's, but for some reason I just can't really get into Pokemon anymore. It's just it's like I got so many Pokemon to train, but I really, really don't feel like it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Also, I do want to use my old Solomon's. He just doesn't have the best IVs. N nothing terrible, but just not the best. Yeah, that's fair enough. But... Yeah, my Darkrai, which I use in just fun matches. It hasn't got the best stats, but once it can get its speed up, that Dark Void. This is why Dark Void is banned, folks. I don't care, I like being overpowered. If I have to work for it, I would like being overpowered. <laughs> oh, that Dark Ride, though. Dark Void. But, um, should we wrap up, like, Mystery Dungeon? Like, should we well, just... Do you have any last things to say on the matter? It was a great game, a great um, experiment for the Pokemon series. Um, I loved it. I was obsessed with it. And um, what else? What else can? What more can I say about it? It was a. Fu it had fun challenges. Nine Nine Floor Dungeons all. And I love the story. I love the concepts. It was just a great game. A great immersion. And um, it, it was good. Really good. Yeah, I think there are a few things that need to be tweaked, which I'm grateful they were to an extent in the sequels. I don't think they handled the evolution system quite well, especially considering the Pokemon that required items to evolve, like Link Cable. Right. I think Link, Link Cable was kind of easier to find, because Link Cable had two uses, the Gulpin Link Shop and the... Um, and I know you're thinking of the Link Box, the Link Cable wasn't used to the gold in the shop. Oh, there it was were two just separate items? Wow. Yeah, the link box is for gold and the link cable is the equivalent of an evolution stone. But this is why you have the wonder mail generator. You know, I didn't have that when I first played through and I had to go through Solar Cave with keys <laughs> every time I wanted to evolve someone who and that need to trade. This is why you looked at the internet. The internet was a thing thing by the time Mystery Dungeon came out. I was 11. <laughs> Are you saying you didn't have a computer? Well, I didn't have easy access to a computer. Oh, that's true. I did. Shut up. I remember when Game FAQs was like first coming out. I had Animal Crossing GC back then. I was like, oh, what are all the KK songs? And my brother printed out a list of KK songs. It was like the most magical thing in the world at the time. Now it's just... You know all the KK songs by now. Yeah, for me, I had to learn all that stuff out the hard way, or via the primer guides, which I still have quite a few of. Most of them being Pokemon related. <laughs> That's true. How many Pokemon? Though I do have the primer guide for Mario Kart Wii, which is why I know the racing lines. Well, that's cool. I, I think I know the tracks by now in Wii. When I think of Mario Kart, all I could see. 200cc blows oh, your mind. Oh, that's gonna be glorious. Oh, I, I, this the first game I'm gonna get when I get a Wii U is going to be Mario Kart. Sorry, Mibu. Yeah. Oh, I have a. Oh, I used to have an R4 chip that I used to have Mario Kart DS on for it. And one of the cheats you can have in that is 300cc engines for only you, <laughs> not the AI. I gotta try that. I have I have Mario Kart. Um, DS, and I got an action replay, I gotta do that. Moon jump? Who needs moon jump? <laughs> when you're basically outlapping everyone, every lap, it is glorious. Oh, speaking of, 
speaking of like outlapping people in Mario Kart, a lot of people say um, Baby Park at GC Baby Park was like the worst was the worst um, course. I think it's actually the best course in design. Yeah, it's simple, easy enough to use. It's a tutorial course, basically. No, no, no. That's how people see it, but that's not how I see it. How I see it is that you easily overlap people, and it's just carnage. That stage is just carnage. Well, I never had a GameCube, so all I had experience for it was from the DS version, <laughs> which is why I see it as a tutorial. Otherwise, so I think it's Shell Cup, I want to say. Um, even then, even if people see it as a tutorial level, you will, you will always remember you outlapping people, you hitting. Even if your first your red shell would hit people in like seventh, it was glorious. It's just everyone gets wrecked because it's such now a small imagine, space. Now imagine baby parking with three hundred cc engine. <laughs> I need that. Can we? Baby park must be in a new um. I we need to get baby park back for Mario Kart Eight. I'm hoping to get the Wii version of Rainbow Road, as I loved that track. Ah, uh, yes. I think I think that um, track had the worst case of falling off the road than others. No, I still want to say the SNES version. Ah, uh, yes. Worst. No guardrails, no lights. Yes. <laughs> it's not so bad in Mario Kart 8 now, because I think they've widened the track, but yeah. when I first played in Mario Kart 7, it's just... Ugh. Goodbye, world! Nice knowing you, buddy! <laughs> Ooh, hey, a Firefox thing. I don't feel like downloading it. But, yeah, I, I guess the only other thing to mention, even though it's not specifically Mystery Dungeon related, right. simple little plug, but Guitar Heroes remixes. Yeah, which I'm probably going to be using as the backing track for this. Yeah, Guitar Hero. Oh. Oh, oh, that's going to be the music. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be, make sense if it was a Mystery Dungeon track, but I guess not Guitar Hero. Well, I'll probably intercourse through, well, Guitar Hero, the person who does the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon remixes. Uh, that Guitar Hero. Oh, oh, that guy. I thought you were going to do a Guitar Hero track. No. <laughs> Guitar Hero remixes. That guy is awesome. Yeah. yeah. That Runaway Faith that I brought up in my playlist filler for Overclock Remix, I love that song. Ah, uh, so good. Everything that he does is really amazing. Yeah. I've got to say, the, some of the ones I'm listening to at the moment from his Explorers ones, I love his remix of Blizzard Island, Concealed Ruins, and Team Charms theme. Yeah. Actually... Well, I remember, that's the one thing we didn't bring up about this at all. Marowak's Dojo. Ah, yes, the Dojo. I never really... No, it wasn't Marowak's Dojo in the first game. That was in the second game, silly. Oh, yeah, right, it's Makuhita's Dojo. There you go. Uh, Makuhita's Dojo, I think it was kind of useless, pointless. I mean, if I wanted, if I wanted to do grind levels, I would do, like, um, quests that would actually give me items, not... Not just do Makarita Dojo, just to go through type-specific dungeons. I think I mean, it got better in the post-game, when you've got the team charms at the end of it, where you've got, like, the... I think Alakazam's team was one of them, or... Team AC2? Yeah, like, once you complete the post-game, you've got access to Team Shift Tree's dungeon, ah. then Team Constrictor, Team Hydro, Team Rumble Rock, and then... Uh, another red, uh, another rescue team game. I don't, I don't think I, I think I don't think I ever been there because, like, to do those teams because one I didn't know about them, two I did, just didn't care about my Kuri Dojo. Yeah, I had a look at it once in the post game, mm -hmm. though I've never done the rescue team one. Right. Because I think it's from a version, from a save file of the other version. And unfortunately, I didn't know anyone who had Blue Rescue Team at the time. Right. Here, here's a tip if you're going through a Mystery Dungeon. If you have a Pokemon with Heat Wave or Powder Snow, and I think there's another move that does this, its, it's a attack is kind of low, but it attacks everybody on screen. If you're in a Monster House... Which is especially house, helpful is, when you've got the Monster Houses. Yeah, if you're in a Monster House, that's insanely helpful. That's why, that's why I had a level 100 Articuno. 
Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know for some reason, Monster Houses is when there are a lot of items in one room, chances are that room is then going to be filled with tons and tons of Pokemon. That's just going to drop down to from the ceiling up. and ruin ru- yeah. your day. The two ways to do it are what you just said being the Heat widespread moves snow. like Powder Snow, yep. or do what I did in Caraway in the corridor and bottleneck them. <laughs> That's if you don't have Heat Wave or Powder Snow. Which you can't have access to when you're a matchup. That's true. This is why you gotta start with a Charmander. Why was matchup even a possible pick? <laughs> why Why will Pokemon... Why were there any Pokemon? Like, why is there... Why do they even have Psyduck? Why do they even have matchup? Why do why they even have... I don't know, Skitty. Skitty was a pretty random choice. Yeah, Skitty I can live with. Never had picked Skitty, but you know, I like Skitty as a Pokemon, so I can live with it. Skitty is p- apparently the most optimal um, choice, because I've seen a speedrun, and they had a Skitty and a Charmander, I want to say. Yeah, I'll have to look into that one then. Yeah. It, it was like, um, whenever I watch speedruns, I only watch the fastest speedrun, so. But why should I wait, waste time with speedruns that would not go as fast. Yeah, who knows. Gotta go fast. Mm-hmm. Gotta go faster, 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 faster. Ah, uh, Sonic X. Did you ever cover Sonic X? No. I'm gonna get to it eventually. Uh, I have watched through it all. Um, Sadly. I don't think I, I... I've seen a couple episodes of Sonic X, but I never really fully watched it. You know what the most beautiful part of any four kids um, dub, but at least by that time was? I remember first episode of Sonic X was like guys with guns. It was like, oh, we gotta shoot this thing. And it's obviously laser sounds, obviously mass like mass over gunshots with laser so- sound effects. Gotta do it for the kitties. Yes, because lasers are kid friendly. Exactly. Rocket launches are apparently kid-friendly if you believe Team Rocket. <laughs> um, I thought... Never this- forget the jelly donuts. <laughs> Never. Like, freaking remember jelly donuts forever. <laughs> Is it oh, like- it's so funny to look back on those things now and just look at how messed up some people are going to be because they believed it all. I was a stupid little I kid. guarantee you there's going to be someone in this world who has watched Pokemon to death who thinks rice balls are jelly donuts. I was a stupid little kid. I didn't know what Japan even was back then. I'm like, those are don't they don't, they don't look like donuts. Are, are they like made a certain different way? Are those munchkins? I don't think you know what munchkins are. Do you have Dunkin' Donuts by you? And no, I don't. Okay. Whenever I hear Munchkins, for some reason, the Wizard of Oz is the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> Whenever I hear the Wizard of Oz Munchkins, I just think of the donuts. Um, if I were to describe Munchkins, they're just, you know, um, you know what donuts are, obviously. Of course. It's like, if you take the whole of a donut, and you just kind of popped, like, if you had made a whole donut, and it's about the size of a whole of a donut, and it's round, that's what a munchkin is. A munchkin is like a round, tiny donut. You can eat in one bite. It's the size of a hole of a donut. That's why they're called donut hole treats. Oh, we've got something similar to those. Uh, Krispy Kreme does them now. as the little packets of four mini donuts. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. They're like... It's like... Um, I've seen, like, munchkin rip-offs all the time. They're like, just donut hole treats. That's all they are. Yeah, fair enough. Really good, though. Oh, now I want munchkins. Let's go to Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, maybe another time. Yeah, it's like 9 o'clock where I'm at. Yeah, it's a, almost 12 here, so... Time zones! <laughs> Yay! Oh, the internet is beautiful. I get to talk to you. You're in Australia and I'm in America. I come from a land down under. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's I always, For some reason, I have that song in reserve, <laughs> along with the... I'm just going to insert this right here. Of course! And move on. <laughs> okay. 
you'll, you'll see, see when I edit it. Alright. Anything more we should cover about Mystery Dungeon before this all becomes tangent? Uh... Let's see, we covered 99 floors, we did Wonder Mail, at least. I guess because it's on the back of this primer guide, <laughs> and the advertisement for what was about to come out at that time, the Lucario thing. Oh, yes! Because the post, the advert of Lucario and the Mystery of Mew is on the back of this book. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Since this game was part of the time where everything was transitioning over the DS age, like, little snippets of Gen 4 kind of popped up in in this time, and this game had something like that. It had the statues, if you remember. Like, yeah. Yeah, you get Never the got Lucario them, range, but I remember them. You get Weavow, Mime Jr., and Lucario statues, and Bonzi yeah. statue. Yeah, and, and you could also get the Lucario rank, I think it was. Yeah, I said Lucario rank. And there is this thing I never got. I think, I'm not sure if it was a rumor or if it was true, but there is an event that you get, and it features a Munchlax that wants food. Like, it's an actual yeah. Munchlax, and you could recruit him, apparently. Yeah. Well, I'm not too sure about recruiting, but I did see that. Because it trips over and an apple falls out of its stomach. Right. I never did that. I heard about it, I wanted to do it, but I never did it, because I just didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to activate it. Yeah, I don't know how to do it either. That's why I thought it was um, a mere rumor. Yeah, of course, because it w this was 2006, this was just at the point where you could still have secrets in games. The internet wasn't spoiling everything. So the rumors of the, if you do this in the specific order, you can unlock Toad for Super Smash Bros. Melee. Those were still a thing, people. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember my brother tricked me a bunch of times. It's like, hey, do you see those two, thi two things on the side of um, the Melee, the whole Melee list? Like, the Melee roster. You got two little empty spots on the side. You know what that means? That means Sonic and Tails were there. Well, Sonic was apparently going to be in Melee, it was cut at the last moment, along with Snake. Yeah, but... They were both planned to be in Melee. Instead, we, st instead we got Fire Emblem. We got Marth and Roy is our boy, except not anymore. I do like the fact that Roy's in Smash 4, the Koopaling Roy, his Chan is actually Roy's our boy. <laughs> I thought that was freaking hilarious. Oh my god, it is. Um, it's like... Well, I only play as Iggy as a Koopaling. I I uh, don't. I didn't pick Roy. I'm sorry, Roy. Yeah, I don't blame you. you for when I'm playing, I one of the Koopalings of that. My pick is Bowser. Junior. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, funny. Though even then, Bowser Junior is not a me. If you want to hear a funny mindset. story about how you said Bowser Junior, uh, one day I was like, I was with my friend, and we were going over this guy's house, like his friend, our friend's house, another friend, and. He's like, he picked me up, and I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, let me stop by, stop by my house so I can pick up my Mega Man amiibo. <laughs> we were just, like, calling characters by, by what, how the announcer called them. By Xander, by the way Xander did in Smash 4. What, what is? Uh, Xander Mophius, that's the name of the announcer? Yes. For Smash 4? Yes, that, that brilliant man. Best announcer, hands down. Uh, Xander Mophis, um, what was it, Xander what? Xander Mophis. Yes, yeah, Xander Mophis for Smash, entering the ballots right now. I mean, he's well, technically, uh, I thought he was technically in Smash because, um, I thought the Master Hand was the, quote, was the announcer. It, it depends on who you talk to. People say it's either the announcer or it's Sakurai himself. I think it's a bit, Either or. I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah, probably. I mean, it has the announcer's laugh. That That's why people say it's an announcer. Like Sakurai, because of the whole game theory thing and yeah. the meaning of the game. I, it could I be either saw, or. But one I thing actually for, saw another... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, nah, it's just one thing's for certain. That is Master Hand. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing I saw recently was another game theory-esque video where... The theory was that Smash Brothers is living with autism. Wait, what? Someone actually put forward a theory that the entire 
Yeah, yeah the Smash franchise is about living with autism. I'm not sure if I see that. I'll get a link for you for that one. Alright. I'll also probably post the link to it right here in the video. That's true. Backseat editing! Yay! I'm not doing a thing, I'm just talking. Well, is it technically backseat editing when you're telling yourself what to edit? Yeah, and then sometimes when you see videos, they're like, hey, I'm gonna edit this thing, and then they never edit anything. Yeah, I keep my word with these sorts of things. You, you got if not, if not, feel free to find me, pump me down, do whatever you like. Don't kill me though, please. <laughs> I'd like to stay alive. Oh yes, being alive is great. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. Ah, uh, portal. I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ooh, you know what you should do, like for future reviews? Maybe you should have like a whole month dedicated to indie games. I want to do that, I really do. It's on my to-do list, it's like one of the things I'm definitely going to be doing eventually, once it probably comes to the Wii U, I'm definitely doing Freedom Planet. Hmm. I don't know what that game is. Never heard of it. it basically, imagine a Sonic Mega Man-esque platformer. Ah. I, I guess, like, a, lot, a lot of these indie games, at least now, just seem, seem like seem like recollections of the olden days. You got Shovel Knight, you got, you know, Shovel Knight for the NES day, NES platformers, that whole Project Ukulele, and, um, and AVGN Adventures. What? AVGN Adventures, which is another game coming to the Wii U, which is basically memorizing how hard those old NES games used to be, ah, how yeah. punishing they were. <laughs> um, is he, like, trying to make a bad game, a uh, hard Difficult, impossible game. It's designed to be hard, but still fair. Yeah. I guess that's good. <sighs> NES. And of course, you've got the NES nerds influence all over it. Yeah. Why did NES games have to be so impossible back then? Because of arcades. Ah, that's true. Because we want your money. Give us your money. Except when the NES games were like for consoles, it, I, I guess it didn't really um, transfer over correctly, so you just have to keep restarting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Balloon it, Fighter, The though. NES was the transition from arcade to home consoles, which is why the SNES onwards aren't as hard. Right. You can still see some of the influences by way of stuff like Super Ghosts and Goblins, right. but it's not as punishing. Right. And. I think we have one game to thank for our save states is Legend of Zelda. Oh yeah. Thank you, Zelda. Praise be to Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Actually, why am I doing that to a random wall? I've got my amiibos right here. <laughs> Praise be to Legend of Zelda. I've I have my two link amiibo. I've got Link Zelda and Kirby. What's Kirby doing the here? Black hole genocidal maniac <laughs> Kirby. Oh god. I've, I have three amiibo. I have a two link Megman Bowser. Yeah, I, I've just got those three at the moment. I do want to get Mega Man and especially Sonic it soon, maybe because of those new Mario Kart 8 costumes. Oh uh, yeah, the, the Pac-Man costume looks amazing. Oh yeah. Mm. Can't wait for that. But I'm definitely getting Sonic just because it's the closest I'm ever going to see Sonic for a while in Mario Kart. Or on console. Nah, for console I've still got Smash. That's true. But, you know, and I mean Sonic in a new, in another console game. Yeah, of course. If if Sonic somehow becomes a new DLC racer for Mario Kart 8, well, <laughs> people are going to be like, why is Sonic in a car again? No, it'll be like October 17th, 2007, I want to say. The day the internet almost died. What, what happened? When Sonic was announced for Brawl. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, God. I, re I remember people speculated, saying, Oh, we got Sonic's gonna be in Brawl before Sonic was ever announced. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, when Snake came out. Came out. Oh, they're finally adding third party characters. Oh, we gotta get Mega Man, we gotta get Sonic, it has to be Sonic! And then the internet died. And a lot of people speculated with Mega Man, too, and now we got Mega Man. Yes. 
Now, can we please get Agumon? <laughs> When's the last time that we heard of Digimon, though? Well, Digimon Fusion Season 2 is currently airing at the moment. Okay. <laughs> and there was a Digimon Smash Bros. game released late last year. Really want to pick it up. Ah, uh, yeah. I think I played that. Oh, God. But my top picks... I already vote for Shovel Knight because I do want to see see if an indie title would ever get into Smash. That would be very interesting to see. My, yeah. but my two pi to, uh, eh, can't speak. My two top picks are Shovel Knight and Rayman because of that because of that quote unquote leak. Oh yeah. That made uh, a by lot. By the time of this goes time. live, my top twenty will be posted. So a link right here. <laughs> More backseat editing. But it was Agamon as my number one, Isaac and or Jenna from Golden Sun. Right. I'd actually like to see them be a duo. Right. I think that would be a nice touch. Uh, I've also got a few others spread around the place, like I think Neku and Shiki from The World Ends With You. Mm -hmm. Shantae also made that list, but that's because I've been seeing way too much of Way 4 trying to say, please vote for Shantae! And also, Shantae got a new game, so that, that kind yeah. of helps her, too. Hope, oh, yeah. Helps her probability, at least. Yeah, and I think, aside from PC, Shantae has only appeared on Nintendo consoles. Right. And, and for all... For when this belt actually closes in the future, all of you that didn't get your favorite character, you could still get him in me fighter form. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, enjoy that as you cry and eat ice cream. Or, do what other people do, make a fan game that has those characters in them. Just play Mugen. Just, yeah, just play Mugen. Though I had, oh, on the subject of fan games, I have no idea why someone modded, I think it was a Brawl, to have the MLP cast. They, I, I'm not sure if I want to see that. I'm not too sure if it was, uh, if they actually modded it, or it's just Photoshop, so I saw it while I was collecting images. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it just gonna be? Are they? If it, eh, I can't speak. If um, if this happens, maybe they'll get another cease and desist, like um, fighting as magic. And yeah, probably. Which actually looks like a good game. It's really a shame. Yeah. I'm actually surprised Hasbro hasn't tried tapping into that audience yet. I don't think Hasbro wants to tap into the audience. I, they're mostly for. You know, all their commercials still feature little girls, so I doubt they really want to get into that. Well, there are games still targeted for girls. Quite good ones as well. Like, it doesn't have to be something as blatantly obvious as the one that comes to my head at the moment, Super Princess Peach. Right. Super Princess Peach, more like PMS to save the Mario Bros. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't a smart decision on their part. I haven't, I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a girl-centric game since that. I mean, I guess for girl-centric games, I guess you can include Nintendogs or uh, whatever style savvy was. I don't know. Yeah, it's the one thing I really don't get. The, it's been almost thirty years since the games industry was rebooted, basically, and. Developers still have been able to make a game designed primarily for girls that's still somewhat playable. Uh, and not just mini games. <laughs> that's true. Hey, are you a girl? Too bad you only get to play mini games. Uh, still not the worst I've seen. Uh, another one that just came to mind The Bachelor, the video game. Mini games, mini games everywhere. It, it, wait, is that like. Is that like you're trying to date this guy, but all you do is play minigames? Dear Shovelware. <laughs> no. No, the worst case for Shovelware has to be on the Wii. Oh, yeah. Especially late in the Wii's life. Ugh, God. I will praise the Wii till the day I die, but even I admit that it had a problem with Shovelware. A big problem with Shovelware. problem. Now if only we had Shovel Knight on the way, that way we can at least counter it slightly. 
No, no, the Wii is dead, basically. But I'm. <laughs> Shovel Knight is the only shovelware game I'll play. It's not even shovelware. Oh, same. <laughs> Though that's mainly because I've had some bad experiences. <laughs> if sh if Shovel Knight's an indie game, we gotta get a shovelware game titled Indie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yay puns. Oh, oh of course. <laughs> oh god. Why do I keep forgetting not to just include that clip? There. Which is that? You'll see. Alright. M. Bison. Need I say more? Are you gonna edit it in? Oh yeah. Alright. Edit in 3, 2, 1, play clip. Play clip. Of course! There we go. <laughs> there, that's it. That's the clip that played. Oh. I'll probably be reusing, reusing it as we go along. There's definitely a lot of things I'll be putting into this. Right. Just as little jokes. Uh, so yeah, I've got the time. Alright. I think we're all I set. Think. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Now this is literally just rambling territory. <laughs> Alright. I guess we should really wrap it up, though. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Hope you guys had but fun talking about ramblings and a little bit of Mystery Dungeon. Hopefully, if we ever do go to the Explorers games, it'll actually be focused on Explorers. The thing with Mystery not Dungeons, everything but Mystery Dungeon. The thing with Mystery Dungeon is kind of a shorter, shorter game, I would say. I mean, it was. It's definitely longer than something like Ranger was, but Ranger's length mainly come, came from the fact that it was so bloody hard to catch anything. Looking at you, Wente. I played Shadows Armia, didn't like it. I thought it was alright. Better than Guardian Signs. Yeah. I know, that's the only Rangers game I've played, though. So, I never really got into the Ranger series. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. I thought they were okay. At least I got a Mystery Dungeon. Yeah. Alright, what are you gonna do after uh, Mystery Dungeon? Like, what's, what's the next game on your hit list? Uh... I'll look it up. Excel documentation for the win. Assuming it loads me. Thank you. Uh, oh, next week is the start of the Marvel Movieverse Marathon. With the first one, the one of the two movies that technically aren't part of it, Hulk. That sounds fun. Wait, wait, wait which Hulk? There's a lot of Hulk movies. Uh, the early 2000s Hulk. Like, the one that got rebooted into Incredible Hulk, which then got rebooted into Avengers. Ah, yes, that Hulk. I don't think I watched. I don't think I watched that movie, but like I heard of it, and there were like, I think I seen a game on the GameCube about it too. It was weird. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I never movie tie-in games. Yay! <laughs> they used to be so good, and now they're all just cash and shovelware games. I will admit, there was, aside from the LEGO games, there is one movie tie-in game which I actually do enjoy. Which was a... Which is kind of ironic considering what I did for a review of it. I actually enjoyed the Bayformers DS games. The first ones. Because it was an open world game, so... Huh. I just never... I just, after, I think, 64... Um... Maybe after GameCube, I just never really... I touch those kind of games because I knew it was just cash grabs. If you get a chance to look into the Lego games, because they, yeah, they're blatant cash grabs. This is Warner Brothers we're talking about, but they still do have quality to them. And they're still. Good. I was surprised with the Lego games. I was surprised, especially the Lego Movie. Everyone loved. I'm like, it's it's just Legos. H how can you love something? It's just Legos. But. It's Minecraft taught us anything is that people like boxes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't mind me, I'm just sitting here with my almost million iron ingots thanks to mining. Congratulations. No, craft a billion iron swords. Oh, why would I do that? Especially when I can make dark matter swords. Ah, right. Mods. Hehehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, 
I think that the whole modding thing is ruin ruining the. I used to have so much space on my PC. Yeah, sorry about that one. <laughs> I kind of threw you into the deep end, didn't yeah. I? If anything, I gotta get into Pixelmon. Yeah. That looks really cool. Yeah, I'll, def I'll definitely join in with you if you do get it open. Yeah. If, well, once I get out of school and have tons and tons of free time, I, I would totally do that. Oh yeah. Maze just around. Yeah, you're not working on a you're not working on a multi-venue comedy festival at the moment. How's that? Well, going at least for at you? the time of writing. How's that going for you? Yeah, slightly sleep deprived. But overall, um. I forgot the word because I've been procrastinating all my life. Um, what was that word? Hmm. It was. Uh, I literally can't think of this word. Obvious joke is obvious, but is it bird? What? It. It's just a really bad joke. Okay. Okay. Oh no! 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 I just got the joke. Uh, curse you, family guy. <laughs> family guy. You, like, that joke used to be so funny, but now I dread when that episode ever comes on. Yeah, but I saw it once, so it was, eh, whatever. I've, now it's along the lines of, why the hell do people still like watching this? Because exactly. the last episode I saw was the... When they had the Nazi old man, I forget his name. And it's just the most boring fight scene of it. Ever seen. I mean, I get that. I get that was a joke, but that, that's kind of Family Guy now. They're very stally, I guess you would call. Yeah. Very PC. And it hasn't got the same punch as like Monty Python spam, for example. Right. That was funny. Yeah. Ah, I love. Whereas that. the fight scene was, is, you could pretty much do everything here. I'll probably add in a list here somewhere of the stuff you can do here for it. You can make a damn sandwich while this guy is transforming, or at the very least grab a drink with ice. You can check your email, you can post something on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, check my Let's Play channel, brain scratch commentaries, order a pizza with a side of buffalo wings, call your grandparents. My god, he's still transforming! Thank you to the person I took that from. Anyway. I love Monty Python. Oh yeah. I think my favorite, one of my favorite scratches was the parrot sketch and the argument sketch. Yeah, one that I like using whenever I can is the get on with it. Done with it. Yes, get on with it. Get on with it. Oh uh, yes, from Holy Grail. Yeah, that was the first Monty Python thing I actually saw, actually. So. I have yet to see Life of Brian. I haven't seen that one either. I've seen The Meaning of Life, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, I gotta see that. I gotta see that. Oh, please, monsieur, just one more little bite. Uh, I guess. I, yeah, I gotta get on that. Monty Python Marathon. Yeah. Why don't they have Monty Python on Netflix? And congratulations, you now have, have accessibility to Netflix if you ever decide to buy it. Remind me to do a Photoshop of the It's been 3,000 years. And Netflix? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that reminds me. I gotta do a GIF of, um... I, I was... Like, I'm binge-watching Steven Universe right now. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it. No, this is the first I'm hearing of it, actually. Oh. Wait, well, you're supposed to... Wait, what? I'm sorry, my speaker's kind of low. This is the first I'm hearing of it, actually. Oh, Steven Universe. It's a show on Cartoon Network, um... Well, I could probably explain because I, right. well, I do have Foxtel, I don't have Cartoon Network. Alright, so anyway. it's basically a show about a kid with three magical girls. And when I first when I first heard and saw Steam Universe, I thought it was going to be one of those shows like Amazing World of Gumball. Again, I'm not sure if you know what that show is either. It's like, I thought nope. it was going to be some stupid, like, something mindless about some kid, like, repeating words. I'm like, uh, this is going to be stupid. But then I saw one episode, and it it just blew me away how much different I thought it was was going to be. Just go ahead and watch Steven Universe and see your expect expectations fly out the window for something better. 
because this show like blew my mind when I when I learned about it. And I'm, it sounds a lot like it sounds like your experience was a lot like what I had for when I did the well, when I first watched the My Little Pony series. Exactly, exactly. That that's how it feels like. It's like oh, this is gonna be some stupid kid kids girls cartoon, but instead it turns out to be something really something much better and much more deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, I can't say the same thing for what I tried to watch last night, being the obvious continuation of it, being the Little's Pet Shop. I couldn't get past the first opening number, or the first main song. I was like, yeah, no. Yeah, I looked at Little, Little's Pet Shop, I looked at Pound Puppies, and nah, just, I'm going to go with My Little Pony. Yeah. Well, at least by the point where the first song would have been done in MLP, they had already established the fact that there was going to be a villain. Right. And it was it would be building up to something. Well, you have uh, some sort of have conflict that. going on. Yeah. It's not like the conflict is like, I don't have a shirt for a prom. The conflict is actually something evil is happening. Yeah, if we don't stop this person, everyone will die. Also friendship. Yeah. Oh yes, and the new, um, the newest episode of season five opening, which gets me really excited for more more episodes to come on, but the weeks go on. I can't wait. But um, cults don't make friendships, kids. No, it's, I've actually heard a lot of people saying that they compare it a lot to SJWs. I. Which I can kind of see to an extent. I mean. Not really. I mean, yeah, the whole equality thing. But really, yeah. it was just mainly cults. That, that's basically what it was, just cult. Plus, this is the first time a villain hasn't been killed off in the episodes they debuted in since Discord. Quote unquote killed, because you can't have kill in a kid show. Come on now. Oh, Sombra was killed off. Oh, yeah. He's dead. Well, then again, can't have kill in a kid, so, kid show. Meanwhile, I mentioned Steven Universe. Not so much of a spoiler, but. But, um, can I just tell you a little about Steven Universe? Like, the setup for it? Yeah, go ahead. What? Go ahead. Alright, it's not really much of a spoiler, because it just kind of opens up to it. Uh, the reason why this kid knows he's three magical girls is because his mom was a magical girl, but she gave up her physical form to have Steven. And that that's just the whole setup for a show. I'm not saying anything more than that. Okay. Uh, that's so good. You have to watch it. It's, like, so funny. And I'll look into it when I get a chance. Yeah. It's um, it's on Watch Cartoons Online, if you ever use that. Alright. Sweet. I think the first thing I have to get through first is Log Horizon. That's the next TV series I'm looking into, is after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ah. Um, don't know what that show is. I mean, I know Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I just don't know what the other show is. Imagine anime's version of being sucked into the video game. Uh, in this case, World of Warcraft. If you die in the video game, you die in real life. Is it one of those? Yeah, it's still better than Spy Kids. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I don't think anything can be worse than Spy Kids. I mean, I heard a Sword Art Online, and I just heard, like remembered that line. I just stayed away from Sword Art Online. It's basically Sword Art Online. What? From what I've seen, it's basically another version of Sword Art Online. Right. I've, I've heard that's getting some sort of reboot. They have guns now. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I don't know anything about Sword Art Online. And nor do I. Yeah, I'm still more inclined to watch that though than Dragon Ball Z. That's true. Dragon Ball Z. That's one of those things where you kind of have to like be like grow up with like. Like, you can't really get into it right away. It's, there's way too many episodes. It's kind of like a Star Trek of anime, if I would call it anything. I thought that was One Piece. That was what? One Piece, which is, I want to say, has even more episodes than Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon combined. That's not the reason I stayed away from One Piece. The reason I stayed away from One Piece is because it scared me as a kid. I just found it completely stupid. No, I found it terrifying. I it, the so. art style was terrifying. <laughs> Oh god. Get away from me. 
It's surprising how many shows are actually like that when you think about them. Like, when I was doing Digimon Tamers a while ago, it was like, this was for kids? They would not put this on TV nowadays. Considering as one of the characters, who is a kid, was about to commit suicide I, by strangling herself. Um, spoilers? With a sock maybe? puppet. Spoilers, maybe? Yeah, I've got it in the review. Okay. Well, that and it's over 10 years old now. I think spoiler warning is kind of thrown out the window. Unless if some people want to watch it, you know. Never heard of Dragon Ball. Um, Dragon Ball Tamers. <laughs> Never heard. Dragon Ball Tamers is O.I.P. Donut Steel. You have to tame a. You have to tame the. Uh, the Saiyans. The Dragon Balls. <laughs> no, you gotta. No, you gotta collect all the Dragon Balls, and you have to raise uh, the dragon. Yeah, you, you have to raise them up. You got. You got to take it your pet. <laughs> oh, someone turn this into a thing, please! Someone turn this into a thing. <laughs> And when you raise them up, and when you finally grow them up, you get one wish. I don't know what that wish is, but do whatever you want with it. Again, someone turn this into a thing. This is pretty much- we're handing you this idea now, just turn this into a thing. And give us money. Oh yeah, wait, that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing with Dragon Ball? What- what- um- what kind of would drive people away from it, I would say. Is that- is that- Oh hey, this guy's dead. Don't worry, we can just revive him with the Dragon Ball. It's no biggie. Plot MacGuffins. Yay. He's gotta love that Deus Ex Machina. Deus Ex Machina, more like freaking just. It's like I don't even know what to call it. Oh hey, Goku. Oh my God, Goku's dead. Nah, no, that's just not a huge thing. Eh, whatever. And every time we see a fight in Dragon Ball, it just doesn't seem that big anymore. It just seems like an everyday skirmish. Yeah. Especially when apparently those everyday skirmishes go on for weeks. And it's just... <laughs> oh, they're finally done? Okay. <laughs> they're done yet? <laughs> they finally pulled off the move? <laughs> oh crap, now he's gonna retaliate. Uh, wake me up when that's over. He with. blew up half the moon! Oh, wait. Yawn. Oh, I've oh. been there, done that, seen Eggman do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you still haven't played uh, Sonic Adventure, did you? Adventure 1 I have. I actually do own Adventure somewhere, the PC version. I've still never played Adventure 2. Uh, I've seen you. Let's Plays of it, so I know what happens, but I've never actually played it. Oh, Adventure 2. Don't kill me, Sonic fanbase, I swear. I have more to live for. Adventure 2 was so good. I, I don't even know why they didn't bring Charles back. Again, now that they're moving to mobile games, Chow Garden. Get on that! Easiest money maker! I don't even care if it's just a direct port. Just put it on there. Um, you can even put in microtransactions for all I care. Just do it! Wait, wait, uh, wait an hour or spend two gems to feed your Chow an animal. Yeah, it's still better than Pokemon Shuffle, which unfortunately I've now gotten into playing. When I saw the new Direct, Don't mock me. I saw the new Nintendo Direct, I'm like, Yoshi's Woolly World, cool, um, Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart 8, um, update, awesome, what are they gonna do for the eShop, mobile games, on 3DS, you know, is it even called shovelware if they're making their own shovelware? Uh, at least with the Nintendo shovelware, it still has that quality control. But even st I've probably paid about one dollar on Shuffle at the moment. It was just to see what it would do. I purchased one gem and that was it. I I, I don't want to give them their money for this. When I saw Pokemon Shuffle like appear on my 3DS, I'm like, oh, what's this? Oh, cool, a puzzle game. I always wanted to play Trozy. Is this some sort of demo for a new Trozy game? And then I saw the timer, and then I saw the gems. And then I saw that you had to pay to eShop. And you can guess the rest. Yeah. yeah. You've seen that vine, didn't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> I got... I legitimately just walked out of my room, came back, and shouted what into my DS. 3DS. <laughs> I will at least admit it... 
Shuffle is okay in terms of the match three games. However, one thing that I do share with a person I, I pay attention to on Twitter is that I don't really... The combos don't feel like an accomplishment. There have been times where I've gotten a plus 30 combo after I've taken out the Pokemon. And I've just felt, eh, because it's all randomized. I didn't feel like I earned that combo. It just, it's set up for you. Yeah. Never, never played Troze, but I, I guess Shuffle would be a good introduction to Troze. It would be, and I will admit that like, the art style and music is quite good. But that's how they, that's how they get you into it. Yeah, I know. Cause that's their ploy. I will also say the microtransaction stuff, while bad by Nintendo standards, because they're not really quite good about these sorts of things, not the worst I've seen. I think that tower goes to Candy Crush. What did Candy Crush do in terms of microtransactions? Uh, extra turns, basically. Hey, want to play again and in under 24 hours? Give us a little bit of money. You need a few extra turns? Give us a little bit of money. At least with with uh, Shuffle, you purchase the gems to do with whatever you want. Right. So yeah, you can use a gem for five turns. Or, or, you, can, or you can get like an upgrade or something. Yeah. So I can live with that because it's still I'm not paying directly for that one thing. I can spend the money to spend I'm, on whatever I want. I'd rather use microtransactions on things like maybe weapons or clothing for some games, but not really. I don't really see it for puzzle games. It's just to get more turns or get yeah. more chance to play well, in the same amount of time. The best microtransaction game I've seen so far: Team Fortress Two. <laughs> Basically. That does microtransactions perfectly, in my opinion. It's not forceful. Well, you can choose to spend whatever you want. I will openly admit some of the prices are a little bit stupid. Five bucks for a sombrero. Five bucks? That should be, like, a dollar. Yeah. Oh. No, that's just one from Honest Trailers, so I forget. Oh, wait, your currency... Still have to figure out how to do the tagging thing. I've never actually been able to figure out how to do the tagging mechanic in Team Fortress. Oh, you mean the name tags? Uh, not the name tags, where you can spray something onto a wall of maps. Oh yeah, I never, I never got that work either. Yeah. yeah it's, exactly. like, it's like this whole complicated thing. You have to go in the file, and you gotta like do something and another thing. It's really annoying. Yeah. I'm see how people. Still not as, it's still not as annoying as conga lines. <laughs> that that was after the point where I quit TF2, and then I, then I just. And I heard about TF2 again. I'm like, oh, what's going on? And just friendship, I guess. Yeah. I was playing Team Fortress around that time. Right. When they came out, so there were points where I'd just see these teams just as conga lines. It's like, are we. Free bait! Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? We're in a conga line. I'm here to play the game. You're on the opposing team. <laughs> Get over it, kid. I'm red. You're blue. You die, and I win. Exactly. You get the game now? Though I still maintain the funnest thing is when you can... When you're a pyro on maps that allow for pyro jetpacks. Oh. So good. Um, I don't think I ever experienced a pyro jetpack. Basic... It, it's basically a flight mechanic for pyros only. But one of the good things about it... Kamikaze pyros. There's a fall down behind them, burn them, fly away. Uh, it's beautiful. Py pyros are like the cheapest um, class, and that's why I love them. Yeah. I think I. Then it, it's also so good to get a hit with the flare guns. Oh, yeah. Because you just see these people suddenly catch on fire and they go, What the hell? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> flare guns far, and you're far just away. So on the other end of the map. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Just snipe him and run away. Oh yeah. Or my favorite part is when you're sneaking up behind somebody, an unsuspecting engineer, and then you just burn everything in sight. Oh yeah. It's it's like the cooler way how to do spy stuff without being spy. I do love what the Australians had for the American sorry, the spy. Medic, the class everyone loves but no one wants to play. Spy, the class everyone hates but everyone loves to play. Mm -mm. Uh, I, mean, 
I'll need being medic. Especially in Saxon Hill, I think med medic's one of the most um, useful players to have. Doctor! Doctor! Oh yeah, that's annoying though. Medic! Medic! Do you really need medic. my help? Do you... Maybe. Like, some people just shout medic just to shout medic. Yeah. Well, the other annoying one is, The heavy is a spy! <laughs> the spy is a spy! Wait, what? Everyone's a spy. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Ne never, never suspect. That engineer is a spy! Burn him! <laughs> now that would be ironic on so many levels. <laughs> I've got to say one of the fun things to do with, in Team Fortress 2, in the man versus machine, get three heavies, fully keyed out machine guns, right. and bottleneck them, two medics healing two of them, and a... a uh, dispenser behind all three of them just to keep reloading their guns. Bottleneck them. Oh, that sounds like fun. I've seen a video um, a long time ago of a heavy. It was like called, it was called like the octopus heavy or something. It was just a heavy crowd of, crowd by around like eight other medics. And that was the <laughs> whole entire team. <laughs> no, that was freaking hilarious. <laughs> And, and the, what the medics would do is that they would infinitely um, make the heavy uber. Like, once the uber's <laughs> done, another another medic will just uber him again. <laughs> oh, that sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and you just got all these eight medics just circling around heavy. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, God. Someone use that as a strategy for the next match. <laughs> Record it. Along and make sure that the people you're playing with have got their uh, mics on just to hear their reactions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone do this. Please. <laughs> Although you need like nine people to do this, like nine friends to do this. I don't care, it's the internet. You can do it now. <laughs> oh. I'm pretty sure there's someone in the world who has nine, who has eight friends with Team Fortress 2. <laughs> if not, get them to have it because it's free now. <laughs> Round, round up a party. Pretty much. <laughs> Still better for friendships than Mario Party. Oh yeah, speaking of Mario Party and friendships, Mario Party 10. Oh boy. What do you think of cars? I like the cars for Bowser Party. I think the car system for that works. If it was up to me, I would have gone Bowser Party, mm -hmm. old school Mario Party. Right. And actually optimize the amiibo so you don't have to use the amiibos to do everything. Right. For at least amiibo party? Yeah. Oh yeah, is that when- If you want to press the A button, tap your amiibo. You want to move forward, tap your amiibo. You want to do this, tap your amiibo. Do that, amiibo tap. Just keep going over and over and over I mean, again. I guess- Thank you, Kevin, for being my example. I guess it's simulating, like, if you're doing actual board games, you have to pick up your P's, go one, two, three. But the gamepad is just not- for that, especially if it's on somebody's lap. You gotta reach over, yeah. just tap the amiibo, come on, almost there, tap! Yeah, it's one of the cases where I think like the power pads from Skylanders would have worked a lot better for that. Just have the pad in the center, and everyone just does it that way. Or, you know, just put the, um, put the game pad down for once. Yeah, but people are, people are jerks sometimes. <laughs> That's true. There's this one. There's this one weird error I got when I was playing Smack with friends. I had the gamepad on me, and it kept on reading me as an amiibo. <laughs> what amiibo? Not any amiibo. It just says this amiibo is not is not um suit like not suitable for Smash. I'm like, what am I then? What am I suitable for? <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> I got a picture well, of it on my Twitter, been... like, kind of way back. It's amazing. Yeah. It would also have been really funny if it turned out that it registered you as a Ness Amiibo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and then everyone would just just freaking tear my arms off just, just to get me. <laughs> well, hopefully they wouldn't get that far, but... <laughs> I don't know, some, somebody go buy, buy me for like $99. Free... 99 bucks? Rip off! <laughs> Exactly, but that's how, that's what people are gonna spend for like um a pit amiibo nowadays. Yeah, that's why I stay a few ways behind 
wait for them pro to go down and for them to actually be in my local stores. Thank you, 3% of the entire shipment. Oh my god. Is, is it- is it wor- what country is it worse for? Because a lot of people say it's worse in America. The amiibo- the amiibo crisis. I want to say Australia and New Zealand, mainly because 3% of all made go to here. How, how many how many Amiibos does e EB Games do has when they first open up and they get ami new Amiibos? Uh, depends on what time you get there. <laughs> when they get the box, about 20 to 30. Oh. When one hour later, none. What my friend told me... If that. What my friend told me... Is that when new amiibos get to GameStops, so at least in the US, or at least here, where I'm at, where I'm at, um, he says when a GameStop gets an amiibo, they get four of each kind. Like, if you want, uh, uh, if you want Ness, if like so many people want Ness, there's only four Nesses that you can get. Okay, that's just stupid. I'm not sure. If, I think I'm not sure if that's 100% true, but that's what I heard. I think the way it's he handled here is that it depends on the box. Like, there'll be in one box of Wave 2 Amiibo, for, oh, sorry, 3 Amiibo, for example, right. there'll be like 10 or so Little Max and one Rosalina. Just as an example. Right. In that entire box. Even though both Little Max and Rosalina are, are pretty rare to find. Well, I just, those are the two I thought of first. Right. Oh, I really want a Rosalina Amiibo. That's so good. Yeah, I'm guessing they're gonna. Rosalina is gonna be one upcoming for the Super Mario Amiibo, which are thankfully a lot better handled than the Smash Bros. Amiibo. Because mm -hmm. every time I go into a store at the moment, I see tons of all of them. Right. I think the. Whereas if I. I think the Mario Party oh, yeah, Ten. The Mario Party Ten Amiibo I think are better designed than the Smash Bros. Amiibo. Because Smash Bros. Amiibo are trying way too hard to look like they're in-game sprites, while the while the um, Mario Party 10 Amiibo can just do what they want. Yeah. I think some of the Amiibo do benefit from this, like the Kirby Amiibo, for example, still looks quite good. Yeah, because it's... But, like, Link and Zelda, for example. I mean, I have a Link. Regular Link. It's just... He's just sitting on a rotten french fry. Yeah, pretty much. I never understood that. I mean... And Zelda's got a giant purple heel. <laughs> exactly. I got I got uh, two very sturdy looking amiibos. I got the Mega Man amiibo, which is surprisingly really sturdy, and the obviously Bowser amiibo. But uh, the only Super amiibo... Super Fighting Robot! What? Super Fighting Robot! <laughs> more like, more like MegaMan.exe. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's why I got him! I, I named him Citrus.exe. Someone, please, make a Mega Man.exe costume for Smash 4. Please. please. You've got Proto Man and X, now make EXE. I, I saw the cutest Proto Man plush the other day. They're actually making posts? No, I, I, um, I'm not sure if you ever get FYEs where you are, but I got one. For, it's FYE for your entertainment. They're kind of rare here, actually. And I, I saw a Mega Man Amiibo and a Proto Man Amiibo. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not Amiibo. <laughs> what am I saying? Plushes. Plushes. There is a Proto Man Amiibo. Just... My god. Wave. Well, next, the next shipment of, of Amiibo is going to be Mega Man Amiibo. Coming out with Mega Man, Proto Man, Roll, Roll, and Base. And only four of them will exist in the world. Happy hunting. <laughs> Please understand. <laughs> Please understand. Now, for a Mega Man Battle Network game with Amiibo, just imagine that. I would imagine that, but no, KG. But that would be so good. That would be so cool. Yeah. Oh, even better. What if, like the, if they did do that? You know those Animal Crossing cards? Imagine if those were battle chips. <laughs> exactly! That, I mean, I think the Amiibo would really benefit from, like, the EXE formula. EXE formula. Well, the Bow Network formula. 
Yeah. It, you could actually have legitimate battles with people. It would be multiplayer. Oh, there's another one that could work. Yu-Gi-Oh. Ah, yes. Any any card game, really. Yeah. You just you could just have tabletop games as we as a Wii U um, games. And coming to the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, Cards Against Humanity. Oh my God. I was gonna think of Hearthstone, but that works too. Yeah, Cards Against Humanity is funnier. <laughs> yeah, but really, you just get to tap a card there just to. Cards Against Humanity, just, I'm not sure if it really benefits from the amiibo formula, but okay. It'll be funnier. <laughs> it'll be completely redundant, but it'll be funnier. <laughs> yeah. For, for the lols. Yeah. But like, with Yu-Gi-Oh though, for example, it'll, well, you can have it for the main matches and your console could keep track of the damage done. Right. I think Amiibos could really benefit from pet simulators too. And then 10 dogs with Amiibo? What about shells? Oh yeah. That too. You gotta have that. Again, Sega, get on this! Please! I want... I want Buster again. He died. Buster, my chow, the bunny chow. Buster died. Well, would it be a good time? Would it be a bad time to tell you then that my first dog in my version of Nintendo Dogs is called Buster? Yes. Golden Retriever. I, I had a Golden Retriever in uh, my Nintendo Dogs, and his name is Scamper. Oh, nice. But now he's pro he's probably really hungry and parched from not feeding him for ten years. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, Scamper, sorry. Nintendo's still alive after 10 years, even if you starve them and don't do anything with them. They'll still be alive, ready and waiting one, for you. One day the I decide, oh, pet. hey, Nintendo's, let me see them. And I see my, my dog starving, parched, and full <laughs> of fleas. I'm just like, this is too sad. <laughs> no, it's worse for Animal Crossing, which is, when you go to Delhi, it's just like, but we're, we're gonna die. You don't need us. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna leave for a couple of couple of days. Hey, hey, hey you, my favorite villager. I'm gonna say Mitzi. Hey, Mitzi, my favorite villager. I I would never let you go, but right now I got school stuff, got work, I gotta be right back. Then, months later, I'm like, hey, I'm back playing Adam Cross. Where's Mitzi? Mitzi! You left us to die! You're so I'm here. sorry! Why are there weeds everywhere? I'm sorry! And then when you go to delete it because your village is pretty much gone, it's just like, I'm doing this for you. Don't make this harder than it already is. I've seen this one comic, um, this one internet comic, where somebody was playing um, GC for the first time forever, and Twiggy the bird comes up, and, it, and the town's full of weeds, and she's like, You left us! You're one of those city folk, aren't you? <laughs> and then the player just turns back the clock just to play GC properly again. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's the main reason why I haven't gotten into Animal Crossing. I do want to pick up New Leaf one day. New Leaf? But I know, taxes. I know how dead. to manipulate New Leaf into, um, think I never lost a villager. Actually, no, that's false. I lost two villagers I loved. But, um, I know how to manipulate now so villagers won't leave you. And it's very easy to manipulate as long as you change the um, th specifically the 3DS um, um, calendar, not not the in-game calendar. Yeah. So it's really really easy to manipulate, and you still keep all your villagers, with me the exception of two. Phoebe Kabuki, yeah. please. Yeah, some sacrifices have to be made. I know. The funny thing is, I actually shipped them in my town, so I, I just assumed they get went on some sort of romantic vacation that they would never come back from. <laughs> okay, now that's hilarious. <laughs> actually, on the subject of Animal Crossing, why is there no Wii U Animal Crossing? Not announced yet. Either A, there it's in the process of making, or B, just don't get your hopes up. Yeah, probably. I think Animal Crossing works better on a handheld anyway. I wouldn't mind if there was no Wii U Animal Crossing. Well, what could be a nice idea is if it was, was uh, using the 3DS and Wii U cross-compat, 
L- so, Lake House. Yeah, you can play it on the Wii U, but you can also transfer it as a, like a download play game to your 3DS. That's exactly how CD for the Wild War worked. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, I think I think if they are going to get a Wii U on them crossing, they should have a bigger town, because the town size was kind of a bit of a problem for the um, 3DS. It was kind of smaller than most towns. Yeah. So if they if they are gonna get that, they gotta have a bigger town. Well, they've got more hardware to play with, so they better. I mean, the game should the game should at least hold a GC sized town. So, but that was huge. So I think a Wild yeah. World sized town would have been better. And then it turns out that they make the map even smaller this time. <laughs> what what can you add to it? It's just gonna be. It's just going to be houses, and you could add one uh, public works project. Thanks, Isabel. Uh, you, I'm guessing that Isabel's going to be one of your playable characters when you get the Mario Kart 8 with the DLC. And Villager. Oh, oh and Villager, of course. If I When I do get Mario Kart 8, I think I'm going to get the Animal Crossing DLC in, um, first. Because I just like Animal Crossing better, and it... You get two DLC, like two um, characters, besides besides like Dry Bowser as a Mario character. You get two um, non Mario characters instead of just Link. Yeah, to be, yeah, fair, to be Link. fair, Link is. If it was just Link, which it was, people were fine with it at first. Mm-hmm. But what they, I'm hoping that they eventually do is themed packs. Right. So. Yes, you can now have Link, but if you get this Legend of Zelda pack, you can also get you know, Zelda, Sheik, Toon Link, Toon Zelda, I would love to Ganondorf. Toon Link in a car. Yeah, Link's the type of, that's what I... Link's the type of person I would not trust in a vehicle. Any vehicle. <laughs> I thought that would be Villager, considering all the Smash Brothers memes. I think Vill- no, the thing is that Villager can drive. I don't think Link knows how to drive. Well, he knows how to drive a train. <laughs> Choo choo! I I just. In fact, if that was his, if that was Toon Link's cart part, I would love them. Toon Link's what? That might just be because I love Spirit Tracks. Yeah. Oh yeah, Toon Link must drive in a freaking uh, train, please. Or you can just bring back the barrel train from Double Dash. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I am glad that they brought back the B Dasher. That was my favorite cart in the DS. Wait, what they bring back? Uh, in the Legend of Zelda pack. Or as close as to Legend of Zelda as you're going to get. They brought back the B Dasher, which was Mario's signature car in oh, Mario right. Kart DS. I forgot all about that one. And of course, the gr- the only cars you should drive on when you're in Mute City, the Blue Falcon. Yes, Blue Falcons only, Mute City only. Yeah, I love that track so much. I've been playing it way too much of that track recently. Yeah, that's, I think that's the best track. Oh yeah. Something, something really unique I heard about the Animal Crossing track is that it has seasons to him. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's good. But my question is, if it's season, is it going to be time based too? Like, is it going to be night if it's night out? I'm not too sure about that. I think it's not going to be bringing in the time based system from Animal Crossing. Right. Though that's just from what people have speculated from the trailers. I could be completely wrong. I mean, they should, because that's what that's the ba- that's what Smashville was. So why can't Cartville be any different? Well, if it was something like the Pokemon Black and White one, which was in January, it's yeah, it's springtime. In February, it's summer. I'm and... not sure if they're going to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Because the reason that. why Pokemon did that is because you didn't have to wait months until you could get a certain form of uh, deerling. Deerling. Or, or like a certain Pokemon. You just have to wait up one month until you can get everything that you need. Yeah. So, I mean, that made sense in that regard. I just don't, I just don't see a reason to do that with um, Mario Kart. Because nothing really changes. Except rules. Yeah, true. Music. Though I do like, they could do what they did for Excite Bike and it randomizes. Ah, oh, because because the Excite Bike track, it all its basic shape remains the same, but the jumps are all randomized. I never knew that. 
heard it, I, I heard a cricket, and I just haven't heard crickets in so long. It scared me. I'm pretty sure there's something I could insert here that probably explains it. Wait, is it like autumn for you right now? Uh, yeah, going into winter. Oh, good, because it's it just got spring here after a terrible, terrible harsh winter. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no such thing as a truly harsh winter here, but that's because where I live it doesn't snow. Right. Ever. Snow, snow is fun for about a day until you get sick of it. Well, coming from someone who's never actually seen snow in his life... I mean, trust me. Just saying? I mean, trust me. If you, if you like, been here for, I would say, about a week when, when it, like, snows, at least when it snowed, um, when it did, you would get sick of it real fast. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna say, you're kind of lucky that you don't get snow. At least come yeah, from we'll just me. just get really bad rain. Yeah. At least it's refreshing. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. I guess it depends on the mood. I mean... I mean, you you wish for, like, freezing cold when, when it's, like, really hot, and you wish it was really hot when it's freezing cold. You just get sick of staying in the same place. Oh, yeah. We're not even talking about games anymore. <laughs> no, it's it's literally just going to random tangents. <laughs> random tangent, random tangent. The show. I hope you like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red and Blue Rescue Team reviews. <laughs> oh yeah, I totally. Because apparently about we were here to do that. <laughs> oh god. I'm thirsty. I need water. Maybe maybe I can get water as we take a trip into Mystery Dungeon Two. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, I've got to get ready here for some stuff. So, if, is there anything else you want to say? Um, not sure. I don't think. I think we covered everything that we need to. And more. And more. More things that you probably don't care about, but maybe you do. <laughs> yeah, who knows? All right, that was fun though. This was really fun. Oh yeah. All right. I should get going. Yeah, I'll see you guys next week for Hulk. Hope you enjoy that.